taking a look at. I managed to get a few of them working here to demonstrate them. So attack, okay. So we've got PHP insecurities here. And here's a few to talk about. Now this one here, I'm very glad I finally did it literally because I misunderstood it from the blog posts I read about it. Um, here, hmm, what am I ugly? I'm going to try to turn out some light. So you might have a, so what this is, this is an app written in PHP, it has you log in, username and password, and it's going to determine your password, whether it's okay, by calculating MD5 and comparing it to this. Now, I can log in with this password, 2406, if I'm root, and that password, I'm welcome as root. Now, the strange thing about that is, if I calculate the MD5, it's wrong. IMD5, let's go to one of these, like this one, not that one, but one lets me do strings. All right, if I put in that number, 2406 and so on, and I hash it, that's the hash, 0E46. But this is looking for 0E199, not even close. Now the reason this happens is because of one of the many horrible things about PHP. Mm -hmm. PHP is by far the most popular language for web apps. 80% of web apps use it. It is fantastically easy to use by being a very sloppy language like HTML. Remember I talked about HTML. If you put in a mistake in HTML, your browser just guesses and keeps going. And PHP does the same thing. When something goes wrong, it doesn't stop and give you an error message. It just guesses and keeps going. So if you compare two things that aren't the same, it will turn one of them into the right variable type without telling you. And in this case, for some ungodly reason, instead of interpreting this MD5 as a string and that MD5 as a string and making sure that all the characters match, it turns this into a number and interprets it as zero times 10 to the 19 trillion, which is zero. <laughs> and this one, it's a zero times 10 to the 46 trillion, which is also zero, so they match. And when I first heard about this, I didn't get the subtlety and I thought anything that started with 0E would be interpreted as 0, which means in a database, every one out of every 256 hashes would have this property. And therefore, you could log in with this magic number pretty much anywhere. But not only does it have to start with 0E, it can't have any letters in it. And that makes it extremely rare. Like, you have to try 100 billion guesses before you'll find one. So in practice, I think this particular flaw is of no importance. Um, however, it does demonstrate a weakness of the language, which has other ones. But then the fix, by the way, is this one. <laughs> if you go in here with root and that number, you will not get in. And the record invalid credentials, because the cure is to use three equal signs instead of two. If you use three equal sign, PHP does not guess at the type, which if they'd asked me, I would have told them that should be the default. But they failed to ask me. Now here we got weak typing again. This one is also a demonstration of when a security test fails, it goes ahead. So I can log in here with like Sam test and Sam test log in. I'm okay. Okay, good. And when I get here, it's invalid. But the interesting thing is you can see the username and password up here in the URL. Now, what you do, I want to log in as root. Okay. And let's make a password of just A so we can see it all here. Okay. And again, I fail. Okay, but here's, I can do this, which might well give you a headache. I can do this. Okay, if you do that, password is now not a single variable, it's now an array. So now I passed it an array with one element A. And now I'm in. Oops, something messed up on me. Got to shrink, take my screen back. Let's put this back in, root. And password can have anything there. That'll do, as long as I have that. There, now I'm root. And because I turned on error messages, PHP warns you, I expected to be comparing a string to a string. Now I'm comparing an array to a string. Now, why did that work? It worked because of the way this code was written. The code works this way. String compare of password to the right answer equals zero. If this is an array, and that's a string, it can't compare them, so it returns null. Null is the error response, and null equals zero in PHP. 
So it passes since I created an error condition. This is the one we talked about before. You create an error, it misunderstands the error, and lets you in, which is pretty rude. And this again comes from this bizarre weak typing. If you had C and you compared an array to a string, it would just stop and say, I'm not going to compare an array to a string. How stupid do you think I am? And move on. But, but PHP will just guess what you probably meant and keep going, <laughs> which is pretty dangerous. So now the P, here's another fun one. Is that the same fix though? Um, if you use, I don't know. I think it is. A three equals might help here because null might not be zero, but I don't think it'll help inside here. There's nowhere to put the three equals. Yeah, so fine. this will still give you a null. Which is fine. Yeah, a three equals might fix it. It's, an, it's a good point. Anyway, so here's, now there's other problems with PHP. There's just a ton of them. This is why, the reason I got involved in this is because this uh, collegiate cyber defense competition, the guy has how to win, and the first item on the slide is if you have PHP, just shoot yourself. Turn it off, get rid of it, oh my God. <laughs> You'll never stop them from coming in if you have PHP. <laughs> but, and that's what in practice it is. Everybody I know with websites based on PHP are constantly getting hacked. And I, me including me, I can see how it happens. So anyway, take, try this one. Here's a file called php5.txt. So if you view this file, it just sits there. It's not executing that code, it's just showing you the source code. Now, what the way this works, this is another highly questionable thing, but the thing about PHP is, if you have PHP installed on your server, then you usually configure it, so if a file ends in PHP, it's active code and you should run it, but if it ends in something else like txt, it's passive code and you should display it. So this means if that parameter gets wrong, your source code's gonna leak out. That's the first thing. The second thing is, okay, so people often let users upload innocent files like images and text files because they can't execute, so they'll do no harm. Well, it's not that simple with glorious PHP. So here I have php5.txt that doesn't work. And that's fine, that's because I put, but what I did was, you can have a php.ini file that determines your handler, but inside any directory, you can add a .ht access file, which changes the rules for that. And here's one that is recommended by many online articles. If you Google, my PHP won't run, they tell you put an add handler line in the .ht access file. So I made a directory and put that in there. This adds handler for PHP 5. And now if you go in there, in that folder, the PHP runs, even though this is php5.txt, because if you do it with add handler, it'll accept PHP5 anywhere in the file name, not just at the end, <laughs> which is pretty rude. And that is strongly recommended because I think you do the add handler because that can go in addition to the set handler that's in the PHP any. So this is, again, convenient, but risky. So now the up user uploading text files can now actually get executable code and run it by putting PHP5 elsewhere, elsewhere in the file name. And the fix is here, um, the, the PHP fix directory has, this is the right way to do it. You have files match, end files match, and here you have regular expression, putting the PHP 5 at the end with the dollar sign, and then setting the handler. That will work, and so if I go into this directory, PHP fix directory, that again just shows the source code, and this one, that really ends in PHP 5, will run. So it is easy to get confused about whether things are going to run or not. And this will have the two effects of letting the user execute code and letting your source code leak out. So that's one of the many reasons why you end up in trouble using PHP. And this one is even more fun. PHP has various ways to harvest data from the user. There is a thing called request, which is the data came in somehow from the user, and I don't care if it came from a get or a post or a cookie. This is strongly discouraged, but it's the easiest way to write your code. And I think people use it a lot because it's really quite common when I do CTFs and stuff that if you use their form, it posts it, but if you just put it in get, it works too. Very commonly, you can put parameters either place that will work. So here, um, PHP, here's where it's configured in your php.ini file. It's specified here. By default, it's GP, which is get first, then post. But I added cookie get post, so we could see the effect of a cookie. So here's the game. If I click this button, it's going to set a cookie containing is admin equals zero, and I'm not admin because there's a cookie here that says is admin is zero. And so the cookie is admin is zero, the get is admin was not set, and the request is therefore zero. It looked in the cookie, it didn't find anything else, and it's I decided I was the admin. So all I have to do is question mark is admin 
equals one. Now I've got two contradictory sources of data. Cookie says it's zero, get says it's one, and in this case, get wins, so now I'm an admin. So now, of course, I could have just changed the cookie in BERT2, so there are other problems here, but the point is, if you use requests, you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't really know what came in and what you're reading, and it's highly recommended to use like get and post and cookie explicitly instead so that you know what you're doing. Another fun one is error messages. You notice it saw it had like warning messages. That's because I turned on the error messages. You can turn them on in the php.ini file, which is again not recommended. It's good for developers, but bad for production code. Um, anyway, that's another problem. PHP is often set to display error messages which reveal source code and such. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. So why don't we take a 10 minute break? We'll pick up 10 minutes after seven. We got another chapter to talk about here. We'll start the next one. I'll stop this recording if I can figure out how. There we go. All right.